Hello everyone and welcome. For the part one of the analyze and design a hip rafter, I just talked about the behavior of a hip roof and I also talked about steps on how to design, how to analyze and design the hip rafter here. Now for this video, for the part two, uh, we're going to just go over this problem right here. So let's get started. All right, design the, uh, design the roof hip rafter to support the given loads. The load equals 12 pounds square feet and snow load equals 38 pounds square feet. The moisture content is less than 19% and normal temperature conditions apply. Reference design values and section properties are taken from the NDS supplement. And the pitch that we have here for the hip roof is a 4 to 12 pitch. All right, so why do we need the pitch? Again, refer to the part one. The part one, I go over the steps and designing the beam right here the hip beam okay so let's get the Pythagorean theorem here we want to get H so H is going to be the square root of 4 squared plus 12 squared okay so uh, this is 16 plus 144 which is 160 so we're gonna get the square root of that Square root of 160 is going to be 12.65. So H right here is 12.65. Now we're going to get the hypotenuse 12.65. Divide that by the x component, which is 12. So a ratio here that we have going on. We're going to use this ratio. We're going to multiply that. We're going to multiply the ratio with the dead load, which is 12 square feet um, in the end the 12 is going to get is going to get cancelled and we're going to be left with 12.65 pounds square feet so this is the uh, my dead load in the horizontal projection now I'm using ASD uh, and with that we could have the dead load plus the snow load so dead load here is 12.65 plus a snow load which is 38 pounds square feet 12.65 plus 38 it's going to give me 50.65 so a total load total load is 50.65 pounds square feet now that we have that we want to find the area of influence the area of influence that this hip beam sees is the area of this square divided by 2 now this is I have a let's just say this is 10 feet and let's say this is 10 this is 20 but half of that is going to be 10 so 10 by 10 is 100 feet squared and half of 100 feet squared is 50 so the area of influence that this hip beam or hip rafter sees is 50 square feet so the area of influence is 50 square feet now I want to get the weight that this hip rafter sees so the weight is just the area of if the area of influence times the total load so we have 50 b squared times 50.65 uh, pound square feet and this is going to give us a total weight of 2532 0.5 pounds so we have the weight now we also want the length of the hip beam over here the hip rafter we want the length we want and it's just terms and based on the uh, plan view so if this is 10 this is 10 this is going to be 10 times the square root of 2 so 10 feet times the square root of 2 is going to give us 14 14 feet so this is our length of the beam itself that we're designing or that we're analyzing the design so just remember that the weight is 2,532.5 pounds and the length is 14.14 feet and I'll write that down again on the next slide so length 14.14 and then our weight is 2,532.5 
pounds. And we need that in order to get the maximum moment and, the, and also the maximum shear that this beam is going to see. So let's get the maximum shear. Maximum shear is going to be this guy right here. Which is 2W over 3. 2W over 3. I'm not going to write. W here is 2,532. So you just uh, multiply that by 2, divide that by 3. We're, gonna, we're going to get a maximum shear of 1,688.3 pounds. So it's a maximum shear, our maximum moment. Uh, it's going to be this, and you have some an approximate. So it's going to, it's going to be point one two eight three times the weight, which is two thousand five hundred thirty two point five times the length of the beam, which is fourteen point fourteen. Plug and chug, and you're going to get a maximum moment of four thousand five hundred ninety five pounds feet and we would like to get the maximum deflection that the beam sees and the equation that we'll be using is this equation but I'll I'll come back to that so let's just uh, design now uh, for a beam in order to take this load so from the NDS supplement 2015 edition reference design values table 4a uh, we have this table right here, and I'm going to use Douglas for large number one. The Douglas for large number one has a bending, FB bending stress of a thousand pound square inch, FV shear parallel to grain of 180 pound square inch, and a yaw modulus of 1,700,000 psi pound square inch and again the bending and shear could be adjusted using the adjust adjustment values just just keep that in mind if you, again if you need to go back just you know uh, stop the the video itself and just go back to it all right and i'll write it down again actually i'll write it down right here so fb is a thousand PSI, FV is 180 PSI, and then E, the yaw modulus, is 1,700,000 PSI. So we want to find the allowable moment that the 2, 2, by, oh, so now I'm going to assume it's a 2, 2 by 12, all right? So just imagine this guy right here is a 2, 2 by 12, even though it looks like it's 1, there's 2, okay? Uh, let's write, let's write down the section modulus of 2, 2 by 12 let's also write down the area and let's write down the inertia so for a 2, 2 by 12 remember that this is going to be it's not going to be 2 it's going to be 1.5 inches and then over here the depth of the 2, 2 by 12 is 11.25 inches okay uh, and that this is just for one two by twelve. So for two, just it will be three, and then the depth will be the same. So for the section modulus, I'm getting a sixty-three. Uh, where are you, section modulus? I have it right down here, sixty-three point three. The area is going to be uh, three times eleven point twenty-five. That will be 33.75. And then by memory, I know that the inertia for one or for a single 2 by 12 is 178. So just multiply 178 times 2, and that's going to give me 356. This is inches to the fourth. This is inches squared. And then this is inches to the third power. Okay, we're going to need this. Uh, in order, we're going to use a section modulus. So maximum moment equals to the section modulus times fb prime uh, for shear 
this allowable actually allowable moment allowable shear is two times the area times f b prime over three and then for deflection i'll, I'll go back to that um, table that we had that gave us the equation for uh, finding the maximum deflection i'll go back to that all right so let's just let's just plug and chug so maximum allowable well, not the maximum but the allowable moment is 63.3 inches to the third times fb prime now what is the prime again this is the adjusted value uh, the bending stress is a thousand pounds per inch and what do we have for the adjust adjustment values we have the, the duration factor which in this case is 1.15 due to snow load and i think that's it everything else is one so we're going to multiply a thousand times 1.15 that's going to give us a thousand 150 pounds per inch and then in this if we just multiply this through we're going to get pounds inch i want pounds feet so I divide this by 12 and the allowable moment will be 6,600 excuse me 6,066 pounds feet good let's get the allowable shear so it's going to be 2 times the area which is 33.75 times uh, FB, FV prime which is 180 times 1.15 but I'm just gonna just keep it 180 because I know it's not gonna fail due to shear uh, let's see so we got 2 a f b divided that by 3 okay so again plug and chug and we're going to get 4050 pounds so again this is greater than 1688 which is the maximum shear and then the maximum moment that this beam sees is 4,595 pounds feet. So, oops, excuse me. So the allowable moment is greater than the max, the, the maximum moment, and the allowable shear is greater than the maximum shear. So, this is good. Okay, okay. Last but not least, we're going to check the serviceability of this beam. It's 2, 2 by 12. So we go back to this equation. We have 0 0.01304 W times O cube over EI. We'll be using this equation to find the maximum uh, deflection of the beam. So this is the plus, no, this is the weight. We'll be using the weight. So we have. 0 0.01304 times the weight which is 2532.5 pounds times the length cubed now the length i want it in terms of inches so i have to multiply the 14.14 14 feet by 12 to convert it into inches this is to the third power divide that by the Yaw modulus is at 1,700,000 and then the inertia is 356 when you plug this in your calculator you're going to get a deflection a maximum deflection of 0.26 inches so then 0.26 1 power times 12 times 14.14 gives us 636 so this is an all over 636 which is really good it's pretty stiff so it's good in terms of moment it's good in in terms of shear and it's also good in terms of serviceability so the two two by twelves are for the Douglas for large number one is perfect now if you go back we're pretty much done designing the hip beam by the way if you go back we have now you need to find because you want to have a post down over here you have to design for the post downs for the post downs and so on and then just you have to transfer all that loading all the way to the foundation but yeah this is how you do it it's how you design for the hip 
beam, hip rafter, if you want to call it hip rafter. That's how you guys do it. Hope you guys learn. Hope you guys were able to understand. If you weren't able to understand, please let me know. I'll try to be more clear. Um, again, thank you for watching the video. If you like the video, like it. If you want to continue see more videos of mine, please subscribe. Um, again, uh, thank you and have a great day. Goodbye.